Good morning. Welcome to chapel this morning. It gets a little bit warmer out there, but also maybe a little bit more slick. As I drove in and parked this morning, I saw other really brilliant people with this freezing rain warning uh, with like blankets over their windshields. And I was like, that's brilliant. So I dug in my back and I found a tarp. And so I'm excited that maybe I won't have to scrape at the end of the day. Welcome to chapel this morning. Uh, it's lovely to have you join us. Many thanks this morning to both the 2015 and the upcoming 2016 teams uh, who either have or will do summer field studies through the Rwanda Service in the Heart of Africa program. Thank you so much for being here and uh, for being willing to share some of your experiences with us here. We also have a Concordia uh, alum who spent last year in Rwanda through the Young Adults and Global Mission program, Sarah Brock, who's actually in town today. And so I called up Sarah yesterday and I said, Sarah, is there any Kenyan Rwandan that we, and am I saying that right? Nope, I'm not. What is it? Kenya Rwanda. I asked her if there was any from, uh, from Kenya Rwanda that might be possible for us to engage in during chapel this morning. And she said, well, there's a Lord have mercy response that we used a lot in church. And so she taught it to me over the phone and I'm going to attempt to teach it to you today and we will use it as our prayer response when it comes time for the prayers. And so Becca will say, Lord have mercy and we will sing back in Kenya Rwanda, uh, Lord have mercy. And so if uh, it's kind of the lower third of your program if you want to take a look at it. Um, I'll say it first and invite you to say it back. So, mwa mi tu ba ba ri re. Once more, mwa mi tu ba ba ri re. It's really simple and it just goes like this. Mwa mi tu ba ba ri re. Give that a try. Mwa mi tu ba ba ri re. Perfect. You can file that away. You can join in. We'll learn it again together as we respond to the prayers. With that, I invite you to stand for our opening greeting. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We sing.
A reading from Zechariah, the seventh chapter. Thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. A reading from Leviticus, the 19th chapter. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Bill Snyder. Um, this coming May 2016 will mark the seventh year that I have taken students to Rwanda. Um, my relationship to, with or to Rwanda um, began in 2007 when I traveled there as a tourist and I fell in love with it. It's green hills, it's complicated and fascinating history. But above all, um, Rwandan people, their warmth and friendliness and their caring and their determination. And I realized on that trip that I wanted to share Rwanda with students at Concordia. And I have in uh, 2009 and 10 and 11, and my colleague Amy Watkin led the trip in 2012. Uh, and I returned with students again in 13, 14, and 15. And my students from 2015 are here today um, to share their experiences with you. Um, in Rwanda, we teach art and music, PE, divinity and morality, and basic computer skills to primary school students at SOS Children's Village in Kigali. In addition, um, students, in addition, one of the students this year will be working closely with the um, psychologists at SOS. We're branching out our program to work in social work and in psychology as well, not only uh, our teaching. Um, the trips to Rwanda are five weeks long. They're service-oriented, and we work hard. A lot is expected of us, and we do our best to fulfill those expectations. We're not tourists, we're visitors sharing what we know, our language, our enthusiasm, and our curiosity. And it's fun work and very rewarding for all of us. My travels to Rwanda have been life-changing for me. I return with new perspectives on my life, my teaching, my world, on ways to improve the trip for my students and for our Rwandan colleagues and the children at SOS. But let's hear now from uh, my students from 2015. Two of them are not able to be here today. One, um, Andrea Kittleson, is in Spain, and another, Shelby Kate Molly, is in Costa Rica. But Luke Lagason is here, Jenna Scarborough, and Matthew Fossum, and let's hear from them. Uh, so when you're traveling, I think some stuff hits you really fast. Like, my Nutella is almost gone. That was like a week one. Um, and then some stuff takes you longer to work through, kind of like the peanut butter that I still have in my cupboard. Then I have about three pounds of it, still trying to work through it. Um, but one of the things that I noticed right away was kind of how happy people were. Um, they have a lot to be happy about. They have a beautiful country. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, just a consistently beautiful. Everything is beautiful, pretty much. Um, and they have a really hopeful future. But they also have a lot to be unhappy about, too. They have uh, a lot of painful histories, a uh, violent past. So I was just kind of thinking about how um, they were dealing with all that. And one thing that I was still kind of realizing now is how little they seemed to talk about how happy they were. Um, which is kind of weird, because in America you'd think that how often we talk about it and how many songs we write that we talk about being happy and all the billboards and stuff that you see. Um, but if you look at studies and stuff, we're not actually that happy, so it's just kind of, it was, it was just interesting to see that, that kind of like opposite thing happening. Um, and one moment that 
really kind of showed this, I think it was going to church. Um, especially like from an LCMS background, you talk a lot about, I think being happy, but people don't really seem to enjoy church that much. <laughs> um, but there it was like, they really, they really had a lot of fun. Um, and when we went, it was, it was fun for us, I think. Our feet hurt, but um, because we were standing for like three hours just singing, um, and it was just constant. They would go from one song to the next. I mean, without even really pausing, if you remember that, they would just like keep playing, and then the words would just change. So it was kind of like one big, like three hour long song, and there were people dancing in the front. Um, so it really kind of seemed like they had found happiness without really looking for it, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a really weird thing to think about, and I'm still tr kind of trying to think about it. Um, but yeah, really great to get a different experience, different perspective to kind of think about some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I'm Jenna, and I'm going to tell you a few stories, um, take a different approach here. Um, to begin with, just to kind of preface all my stories, um, I picked a few of these because I think it's really important that people realize that Americans aren't um, perfect and we're not like the best in the world at anything and everything, um, which is what a lot of people have thought. As I've traveled, I've seen a lot of people think that America is very exceptional and in some ways maybe we are, but um, my stories maybe prove that we're just as human as everyone else in the world. Um, so yeah, um, my first story takes place in a van and in Rwanda, everyone drives these vans, which are about minivan size, um, but you fit about twice as many people as you would in America. And you kind of taxi around in these vans. Um, so when I was in this van with my fellow travelers, um, we were about to take a trip and it kind of serves like a taxi. So we were gonna drive for a few hours, I think. And I slammed the door on the minivan and the door just fell off the van. <laughs> Um, completely detached from the vehicle itself. Um, and the man behind me just laughed at me. Um, but it wasn't just like a chuckle, it was like a full body laugh. Um, and I didn't really know what to do. I just kind of sat there and looked at the door on the ground. Um, but then I couldn't help joining in with the laughter. And I think it's really important to be able to laugh at ourselves um, and to prove that we're not as perfect as maybe we think we are or as other people think we are. Um, to be on the same level as other people is very important. Um, my second story is about playing soccer at a school um, with predominantly deaf children. And this was one of my favorite experiences of our entire trip. Um, but if you look at me and if you look at my other fellow travelers, you could probably guess that none of us are very athletic. Maybe Luke, but... Um, so we were playing with these children and we were just not very good. And I think we scored maybe two or three goals and they outscored us every time. Um, but it was very exciting to be able to play with them. Um, they would use sign language to communicate and it was almost harder for us to not be able to speak to each other, but they knew what they were doing and they would cheer us on when we scored and they would not make fun of us when we didn't score. And it was just a great feeling to be able to play with these kids. Um, and they were, most of them were younger than we are, but um, they did a lot better than we did. And it was a good feeling even though we lost. So. Um, and my third story is kind of something that happened every day. Um, when we would go out and teach, we would um, use chalk and chalkboards or we'd pass out crayons to draw pictures. And every single day we would all drop a piece of chalk or a crayon and it would break. And um, the children would all apologize. Every time something fell on the floor, the entire class would say, sorry. And I think that was a really cool moment because um, usually here you'll see people laughing or you'll see people just kind of ignoring it. But in Rwanda, everyone recognizes the mistakes. And I really enjoyed that um, kind of accepting that we're all human and that we all do these things. So I really enjoyed um, all of these things and getting to know the people. Um, like Luke said, everyone is beautiful and they're all very kind people, so.
Good morning. My name is Matthew Fossum, and I'm a senior majoring in English education. I went on uh, the Rwanda May seminar this past May in 2015. And I have to say I'm grateful for the time to just kind of gush about it, so thanks in advance for that. Um, looking back, the reason I gave for wanting to go to Rwanda um, was uh, my major, and that's certainly true, but more so, uh, I just wanted to go somewhere entirely different. I knew, or at least strongly hoped, that this would be good for me. Um, but this hope was made desperate due to the fact that getting there was going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, it was going to be a financial challenge, but also my dad was not convinced I needed to go. I know he was just being my dad, but he was doing too good of a job of it. <laughs> he enunciated fears about money, but also that something dangerous might happen, that I might get ill, um, or worst of all, uh, I would come back and realize that it was a waste and that it wasn't worth it. With the constant struggle of trying to make this trip happen for me, um, I kind of internalized those fears. Um, luckily, I returned, returned with the firm belief that Rwanda really did change my life for the better, and it was so much more than worth it. Uh, the trip itself really was remarkable. The things we got to see and do were incredible, and, and the opportunity to interact with people uh, literally halfway around the world um, means a lot to me. One such interaction occurred uh, at the SOS village in Biumba in the northern part of the country. Um, it was actually cold enough there that we needed to wear sweaters, so that was fun. We enjoyed that. Um, and the employees there got a huge kick out of hearing uh, about how cold it gets in Minnesota in the winter months. Um, but at one point, a male student came up to Bill uh, and, and plainly asked him why slavery existed in America. How do you answer that question? Um, Bill did what I thought was a remarkable job, though. He looked straight into the boy's eyes, put his hands on his shoulders, and explained how Americans at that time needed uh, workers to pick the cotton, but that it was a terrible practice and that we were sorry. And the boy uh, plainly said back, but we forgive you. <laughs> Which is a really uh, difficult thing to, to witness and not choke up at. Anyway. <laughs> there was something strange about being in Rwanda, though. Um, I remember walking back to our huts one day and talking with Jenna about how the experience itself was only going to last five weeks, um, but after that it was only going to exist as a memory, and how weird that felt to be uh, present in a time that would last in my mind for decades to come. And so far that's turned out to be true. I had to be in Rwanda and be engaged fully in all that that entailed in order to experience the growth that I have felt since coming back and uh, that I will continue to feel. Uh, some of the growth sprouted from trivial things. One of the first things I felt was how weird the vast stretches of Minnesota forest looked like from the window of the airplane before we landed in Minneapolis probably because there weren't scores of people dispersed uh, throughout them. Another memory fresh in my mind is uh, turning on the shower head once I got back to my apartment on campus. All I could think about was how loud the shower was. Uh, the, the water pressure was so great. I had so much of it available to me that it seemed frivolous. Looking around, I had a four-person, fully furnished, nice apartment to myself, and that just kind of seemed unfair. And it's not that I pity the people of Rwanda for what I have and for what they don't, uh, but it's just different. I never realized how much I possess that really is just given to me uh, through no merit of my own. So now I look at my life as much as I can through the eyes of the people of Rwanda. I see my life in the greater context of the world I inhabit and the lives that people lead on the other side of the globe. Uh, and I see this playing out in many ways. For starters, it has given me more paths to consider when I leave Concordia. I don't shy away from the possibility of picking up my life and moving it to some part of Africa or any other continent uh, at some point in my adulthood, um, be it to teach English or otherwise. I can only dream of what that would do for my worldview. Additionally, studying the Rwandan genocide of 1994, the year of my birth, has changed the way that I look at human conflict, as well as the way I view current events. My Google News app is, is, includes stories that come out of Rwanda, as well as other parts of uh, other countries in Africa, which is a continent that I never previously considered, um, that only existed in my head as a landmass on a world map. Now the continent of Africa plays on my mind as a powerful force in this world, in my world. So today I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to go to Rwanda. I'm grateful for the myths I got to dispel about countries in Africa, 
what I was able to bring back and tell my father and the rest of my family about these myths and to see that they were changed for that too. I'm grateful for what I learned and how I feel like I've grown. I'm incredibly grateful to Bill and to the Global Education Program for without them, I wouldn't have been able to practice traveling mindfully. So much of the trip and what I gained from it were made possible through the existence and the format of the May Seminar Program. What I'm going to say last, I don't mean as a cliche. Going to Rwanda changed my life. With the whole people of God, let us pray for our community, those in need and all of God's creation. We pray to God to eradicate all the misery in the world and that understanding will triumph over ignorance. Lord, have mercy. We pray that generosity will triumph over indifference, that trust will triumph over content, and that truth will triumph over falsehood. Lord, have mercy. We pray for peace and justice in the world, the nations and those in authority, and for the community of God. Lord, have mercy. God, we thank you that you sent your son to die for our sins and that the death of Jesus on the cross brought us redemption and salvation. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all of us who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that we will know and understand your love and grace for us and that we would share your love and your light with others wherever we go. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer of the day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We stand for the blessing. God who creates light, God who is light, God, who reveals light, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. For our sending song today, we sing a song not from Rwanda, but from South Africa. Um, and we know you have to get to class, so we can't sing for three hours, um, which would be lovely. But you know, in your, in your northern Minnesotan-ness, uh, or wherever you come from, if you would like to dance a little, it's okay on this song. And we are going to do the first verse um, in, uh, in Swahili, and then we'll go to the English. So I'm going to teach it to you again really quickly, so just repeat after me. Tuma mina. Tuma mina. Tuma mina. Tuma mina. Tuma mina. Kosi yam. Pretty easy, right? You can do it. All right, here we go.
in peace serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.